Hi, I'm Davey, the last wanderer of Mars. What you're about to see is the re-edit of Astonishing. Episode 21 of the series, made about a year ago, just before the release of the feature film of Ant-Man. I made this episode along with my friend. That's right, the Astonishing Ant-Man himself. After nearly a year on the playlist, someone filed a copyright claim against Astonishing. And of course, you all know how I feel about YouTube and its copyright claim policies. And if you don't, go to the playlist and go to the episode called Truth in Everything. It'll pretty much give you my spin on YouTube and its policies. This time, however, the issue wasn't music. This time the issue was a trailer for the Ant-Man feature film. Now, since YouTube's editing equipment would not allow me to remove the trailer itself, the only thing I could do then was simply take the video down completely. Now, YouTube will not allow me to put the re-edited version of Astonishing back in its original slot, so it has to be presented as a brand new episode of The Last Wanderer of Mars. So, let's take a look at this new re-edited version. This time out, it doesn't compare the original Ant-Man story to the feature film of 2015. This time, we'll just simply look at the origin of the astonishing Ant-Man, both in the comics and the origin of <laughs> my little action figure friend. And it begins with a very, very strange experiment. This is Florida, the world's largest retirement community. Due to the ever-present tropical conditions here, Florida is also the home to an amazing array of insects. Stop it! He's reaching his arms up. God, no. What is that anyway? I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Uh, uh, uh. Stop it! Uh. I can't believe it! Train sucks. And the king of all of these is the cockroach. Cockroaches are everywhere. And once they arrive, they're like an out of state relative. You can almost never get rid of them. But here's a little known fact about cockroaches. If you leave a glass of red wine unattended on a counter in a house infected with roaches, those little bugs will find it, climb up the side, jump inside, and drown themselves while lapping it up. Let's try a little experiment, shall we? Here is the experiment. We're going to pour a glass of wine. Now, I'm going to set it in the living room. We're going to place the glass right here. And we're going to see exactly what it will attract. All right? Okay, it looks like we've got a first candidate here. All right, here it comes. Wait a minute, that's not a real bug. That's the Astonishing Ant-Man. Dude, do you know how close you came to getting a face full of raid? Well, what the hell does a guy have to do around here to get a drink? In case you don't know who this little fellow is, he is none other than the Astonishing Ant-Man, based on one of Marvel Comics' very first superheroes. Now my little action figure here is based on a real Marvel Comics character that first appeared in a comic book called Tales to Astonish. Now where Ant-Man came from is a fairly interesting story, actually. Uh, way back in 1962, of course, there was no Marvel Comics. It was Atlas Comics, and its publisher was a guy named Mark Goodman. 
Well, right about that time, DC Comics, which was being published under the name of National Periodicals, had uh, scored a gigantic hit with the Justice League of America, which was a compilation of all sorts of different DC superheroes. Now, the way the story goes, Martin Goodman was having golf with a couple of the distributors for uh, National Periodicals, and they were just bragging their heads off about the success of the Justice League of America. Supposedly, it was outselling every single comic book on the stands. Well, as soon as Goodman heard that, he went back to his office, and he pulled in his editor-in-chief, one gentleman by the name of Stan Lee, and told him that he wanted him to develop a team of superheroes. So, Lee went back to his office, called in legendary comic book artist Jack Kirby, and together they developed the Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four first appeared in November 1961. At the beginning of 1962, it was the only superhero comics in the Atlas group. At first, most people thought it was another in a long line of science fiction monster comics like Journey into Mystery, Strange Tales, Tales of Suspense, All of which offered bizarre encounters with creatures like Groot in Tales to Astonish. Fantastic Four offered superheroes and monsters too. With the Fantastic Four, Stan Lee had literally hit the jackpot. While he was planning other superhero titles, DC introduced its newest superhero, the Atom. Billed as the world's smallest superhero, the Atom could change both his size and his density, making him a curious but formidable opponent. Actually, Ant-Man was Stan and Jack's answer to the Atom. Like the Atom, Ant-Man could instantly reduce his size, but also, while ant size, he retained the strength of a full-grown man. Oh yeah, and he could talk to ants. Now, size change has been a story device in literature ever since Jonathan Swift created Gulliver's Travels, and Lewis Carroll had Alice shrink away after finding a bottle that said, Drink me. But nowhere in literature has the subject of size change been taken to a more horrifying level than it was in this incredible 1950s novel by Richard Matheson called The Incredible Shrinking Man. And in the late 50s, The Incredible Shrinking Man was made into one of the defining drive-in films of the entire decade. The Shrinking Man is the story of Scott Carey, who is accidentally exposed to a radioactive cloud that causes him to slowly shrink in size. Rife with the best special effects of its day, a now tiny Scott has to fight off his one-time pet, who now sees him only as prey.
once he's dumped into the basement and given up for dead, he has to fight an even stranger adversary, a now seemingly giant spider. Now compare with that, if you will, one of the best drive-in films ever made during the 50s, and that was a film called Them. In this 1954 science fiction drive-in classic, radiation from atomic bomb testing has had a reverse effect on a colony of desert ants, turning them into giants. Like Scott Carey fighting his giant spider, a young James Arness is forced to enter the nest in order to fight the ants to get rid of the menacing colony. Now put the incredible shrinking man and them together and what have you got? Tales to Astonish number 27. The Man in the Ant Hill. wasting our time with your ridiculous theories, but they never work. You should stick to practical projects. No. I'll work only on things that appeal to my imagination, like my latest invention. Or, or what's that? I won't tell you yet. You would only laugh at me as you've done before, but when I've finished it, I'll show you. Then you shall know I'm a greater scientist than any of you. It works! I... I've done it! So, at last, the great day has come. My serums are finished, I've tested them on the chair, and they work. Now, all that remains is to test them on a living object. On myself. First, I'll take a few drops of the reducing potion. It's shrinking me so fast, I, I can see myself change. I'm becoming smaller and smaller. He falls right in front of an anthill. The ants have spotted me. They're attacking. The ants build tunnels and chambers in their hills. If I can just hide in one of them long enough to figure a way out of this nightmare. So far, so good, but, but what's that above me? Oh no, another ant, waiting for me. He's taking me up the window. I'm going to be saved, saved. The serum. I I'm growing. I'm getting bigger and bigger. I'm normal again. I'm a man again. And so, now considering his serums, too dangerous to ever be used by a human being again. Henry takes both serums and pours them down the sink. Of course, there's no explanation given as to why pouring one of these serums on a chair will shrink it down to ant size, but pouring it on a sink will have no effect at all. Come to think of it, there's no mention of what's going to happen when this stuff gets into the water supply either. Nonetheless, Henry Pym didn't know it. But his saga wasn't over yet. 
while Henry Pym was practicing judo on an ant. The Atom was not only growing in popularity, but he was gaining a reputation as the world's smallest superhero. To answer this call, all Marvel had to do was return to Tales to Astonish. Believing it's too great of a discovery to have been lost, Henry has remade his formula, but hidden it away. Meanwhile, due to his experience in the anthill, he begins an intensive study of ants. This helmet I've devised will enable me to contact the ants, to tune in on their wavelength and actually communicate with them. And I have designed a protective costume to wear which shield me from accidental ant sting or bite. Now Henry's been doing his ant project in his spare time. He and his colleagues have been working for the government to develop a gas, an anti-radiation gas. So it's actually no surprise when the Russian spies show up. Ah, there he is. We want the anti-radiation formula. You will get nothing from me. We will search the laboratory and find the information ourselves. When we're finished, we'll blow this place up. It will look like Pym and his men had an accident. Locked up in his lab, Henry hatches an audacious plan. He suits up, retrieves his serums, and heads out to... And there's my destination. The ant hill. Must be careful. I don't want the ants to see me yet. Wait. I feel vibrations against my helmet. It's incredible, but there's only one possible explanation. When I took the reducing serum this time, it diminished my size, but not my strength. I still have the strength of a full-grown man. Emboldened by that discovery, he activates his helmet, enlisting the aid of the ants. Steady. Do not be afraid. I shall not hurt you. He leads them to his lab, where the spies are still in control. He tries to rouse one of his co-workers, but it's useless. He, he can't hear me. My voice is too low. Even if I screamed, it wouldn't be audible to him. But as the Ant-Man climbs over his assistant's hands, the larger man reacts the way anyone might to the sensation of a crawling insect. No, don't shake me off, don't. Due to his unexpected strength, he's able to loosen the ropes. I do not know what's going on, but somehow my ropes got loose. Mine too. Since those murderous reds are without guns now... Let's get them. I guess the boys can handle things from here on. I'd better get down to my office before they search for me. All that's required is one dip in the enlarging syrup, And it is over. The danger is ended for now. And my secret is still safe, but I wonder, will I ever be forced to become the Ant-Man again? Offhand, I'd say that's a big yes. Not only has Marvel Comics launched a brand new series of Ant-Man comic books, but now our diminutive hero is off to the flicks to star in a feature film all his own. Do you think maybe I could get my own wine glass? Mouthy, isn't he? Now, you might be wondering where this little action figure came from. Well, I actually made him right about the same time that the Ant-Man feature came out in Tales to Astonish. Oh, no kidding. Originally, he wasn't a superhero at all. No, I sure wasn't. I was always a high flyer, though. Ah, oh, that's totally true. Originally, he was part of a Marx playset of Little Green Army Men. In the 1950s, Lewis Marx and Company began selling Army Men playsets with all sorts of accessories, mostly through that baby boomer's dream book, the Sears Catalog. 
My pal Ant-Man here was originally from a set called the U.S. Army Training Center that my older brother got for Christmas. He was one of the 11 44mm Air Force characters the set contained. And his name was number 11, Pilot Walking, Swinging Arms, Metallic Blue. Well, I altered Pilot Walking, Swinging Arms uniform with an X-Acto knife and some sandpaper, added a mouthpiece and antenna to his helmet and a paint job to his metallic blue form, transforming him into the astonishing Ant-Man. The coolest thing about having a toy Ant-Man is the fact that unlike other action figures, he's life-size. Wait a minute. Who are you calling a toy? Well, I... Oh! Oh! How'd that look? That looked great. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looked wonderful. Dazzling. Astonishing. Oh, yeah, you know that whole cockroach in the wine thing? <laughs> That's absolutely true.